Russia's Federal Security Service. Throughout the world, there are many national policing agencies designed to root out criminals, provide internal security, or uphold the will of the regime. Few, however, have as long or complex history as Russia's Federal Security Service. Secret state policing is nothing new to Russia, having its origins as far back as the 16th century with the establishment of the Oprichniki under Ivan the Terrible. In the late 19th and 20th centuries, the Okhranoi Odilinai was established to suppress any perceived agitators in the latter days of Tsarist rule. The current Federal Security Service can trace its lineage to the Bolshevik Revolution in the aftermath of the overthrow of the Tsarist regime. In 1917, Communist leader Vladimir Lenin established the Cheka, a secret policing force with the mandate to monitor and suppress counter-revolutionary activities, focusing on enemies of the state, such as clergy and former nobility. After the formation of the Soviet Union in 1922, the Cheka was replaced by the GPU, or State Political Administration, renamed to the OGPU, or Unified State Political Administration. A year later, though, agents of internal security were still often referred to as Czechist, a label that persists even today. Like its predecessors, the OGPU was responsible for arresting enemies of the regime, as well as overseeing the collectivization of farms and overseeing the earliest of Soviet gulags, or forced labor camps. In order to keep dissidents in check, the OGPU had total control over internal security for the Soviet Union, which included placing an army of informants in Communist Party functions, the Red Army, factories, farms, and anywhere else enemies of the state could potentially be found. In 1934, as an attempt of Joseph Stalin to consolidate power, the OGPU was transformed yet again into the GUGB, or Main Administration of State Security, and integrated into the newly formed security apparatus, the NKVD, the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs. The GUGB, as part of the NKVD, played a pivotal role in the Great Purge, which saw the execution or imprisonment of hundreds of thousands of military personnel party officials, and other supposed dissidents. In 1938, leadership of the NKVD would be taken over by the infamous Lavrenti Beria. In 1941, the NKGB was formed, separating state security from foreign intelligence, a split which was formalized in 1943, though Beria remained the leader of both foreign and internal security. During the Second World War, the NKGB played a major role in supporting the Soviet war effort, administering prison camps, conducted extensive intelligence and counterintelligence operations, and monitored the Red Army for disloyalty to the regime. In 1946, the NKGB was once again reorganized, becoming known as the Ministry of State Security, or MGB. Shortly after the death of Joseph Stalin in 1953, the MGB was once again merged with the Ministry of Internal Affairs, or MVD, still under the control of Beria. In the scramble for power after the dictator's death, Beria would be imprisoned and executed. In the following years, the extensive prison labor system would release millions of political prisoners, and the MGB would be dismantled. Even as the MGB and other security forces were being eliminated in the post-Stalin reforms, there was still a clear need for intelligence and internal policing within the Soviet Union. In 1954, the KGB was created, with its stated mission to act as the sword and shield of the Communist Party. Throughout the Cold War, the KGB was actively involved in foreign intelligence gathering, a direct parallel to the American CIA and British MI6. Though it also was heavily involved in internal policing, once again being used to monitor Soviet citizens for disloyalty, treason, or any activity deemed a threat to the Communist Party. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, and with it, the KGB as well. Much like the nation it served, the KGB was split into several different organizations, based on national lines. In Russia, the task of international intelligence gathering was taken up by the SVR. Internal policing would be handled first by the Federal Service for Counterintelligence, or FSK, until it was reorganized in 1995 to the Federal Security Service, or FSB. 
In 1998, former KGB operative Vladimir Putin was appointed head of the FSB by Russian President Boris Yeltsin. Since his ascension to leader of Russia in 2000, two men have headed the agency, both considered to be close allies of Putin. The FSB is located at the former headquarters of the KGB at Lubyanka Square, a short walk from Red Square. The head of the Federal Security Service, currently Alexander Bortnikov, is appointed by and directly answers to President Putin. As a former espionage officer, Putin has placed a tremendous emphasis on intelligence gathering since his ascension to power and has poured vast resources into the FSB, making it the largest security service in Europe. Even before becoming leader of Russia, Putin identified foreign espionage as the greatest threat facing Russia and has taken steps to counter it. Like its KGB predecessor, one of the primary tasks of the Federal Security Service is monitoring foreign nationals living in Russia, with emphasis placed on diplomats and others working at embassies. American personnel working at the embassy in Moscow were constantly watched for any signs of espionage, and diplomats and others working there soon learned to control their private conversations, as locally hired staff often reported to the FSB. Even outside the embassy grounds, FSB agents would keep close tabs on their foreign charges, following them into museums, restaurants, and train stations, lest they actually be CIA agents passing along sensitive information. This occasionally led to humorous incidents, where the FSB officers would reveal themselves, in one instance reminding an American CIA officer that he was about to miss his train and would be stuck outside of Moscow if he didn't hurry to the station. On another occasion, the surveillance team prevented an American official from being mugged on the street, chasing off the criminals. While the FSB does concern itself with dealing with foreigners, the priority of the organization is devoted to policing the Russian population. Particular emphasis is placed on monitoring the military, with at least one operative attached to each regiment in peacetime and one per battalion during war, though this number can increase as deemed appropriate. Once in place, the agent gathers informants, drawn from the soldiers themselves, but also support staff, civilians living in the area, and even family members of the soldiers. The FSB can be heavy-handed when dealing with those deemed a threat to the regime. In 2006, FSB defector Alexander Litvinenko was living in London when he suddenly fell ill. After extensive testing, it was discovered that he was poisoned by polonium, a rare radioactive element. All evidence points to the FSB and the Russian government government ordering the assassination, as usable amounts of polonium can only be produced through extensive nuclear programs, something only a national government would have access to. The assassination was made possible due to a law passed earlier that year which allowed FSB operatives to eliminate terrorists and other extremists in foreign countries. Another possible target of the Federal Security Service include Anna Stepanova Politkovskaya, a journalist and critic of the Putin regime. She was found shot in her apartment in 2006, and scrutiny fell on the FSB for their possible involvement. Politkovskaya was allegedly preparing to release a scathing report against Chechnya's leader and Putin ally Khramzan Akhmadovich Kadyrov for human rights abuses when she was killed. In addition to espionage, the FSB also plays a major role in counterterrorism operations, particularly against regions in the northern Caucasus, such as Dagestan and Chechnya, having focused on the region since the late 1990s. In September 1999, Chechnyan terrorists attacked apartment buildings in Russia, killing over 200 people, provoking the first Chechnyan war, though Litvinenko claimed that this was a false flag operation led by the FSB, designed to justify the conflict. Conflict. Like their espionage, the Federal Security Service can be heavy-handed in their approach to dealing with terrorism, using direct force as opposed to subtle tactics to achieve their goals. In 2002, Chechen terrorists held some 850 people hostage at the Duprovka Theater in Moscow. The FSB pumped in knockout gas into the building before storming in. Though they were successful in eliminating the 40 hostage takers, over 130 of the hostages died, only 5 at the hands of the terrorists. 
missed. The rest succumbing to the gas or caught in the crossfire. Similarly, in 2004, the FSB was called in to end the three-day Beslan school siege and stormed the building. The assaulting agents utilized overwhelming firepower, such as heavy machine guns, grenade launchers, and even a tank's main cannon were used. As a result, over 330 people were killed, including 180 children. One of the worst school shootings in world history. State policing has a long history in Russia, and the Federal Security Service is the latest in a long line of organizations willing to perform the bidding of Russia's leadership.